Hi friends. Uh, welcome to episode 124 of the Quirky Monday Craftcast. My name is Kalisha and you can find me anywhere online as Nadira Tani. Um, I'm coming to you from my house in Central Florida. And if you are a new viewer, welcome. I hope you enjoy this episode. If you're a returning viewer, welcome back. And to everybody, thanks for coming to hang out and spend some time with me today. Um, I don't think I have anything for admin. I don't think so. So let's get to it. So let's start with finished objects. The first finished object that I have to share with you, I do not have to share with you. Um, I think last episode, I may have had, yeah, last episode I had it as a work in progress. I'm talking about my Ravenclaw tote bag that I knit. Um, I will put a picture here so that you can see the awesomeness that the tote bag came out as. So, so the patterns that I used were Hogwarts of History and Ravenpaw. Those are patterns by uh, Megan, Megan Reagan, who is Bad Wolf Girl, Bad Wolf Girl Sits and Knits. And uh, they're both, well, Hogwarts of History is a people sweater pattern and Ravenpaw is a dog sweater pattern. And what I did was I chose like some of my favorite motifs from those two patterns, put them on a chart. I had to modify some of the motifs so that they could all fit within the same like stitch count, but it came out wonderfully. Um, I spent the entire, well, entire, except for like this much, um, but the pretty much the whole bag, I knit uh, two strand color work, with, um, what am I trying to say? One strand in each hand. Um, and that gave me a lot of practice with um, English style knitting. And um, I definitely want to jump into another color work pattern like Soon Soon. Um, and I have some, some things percolating on that idea, but my Ravenclaw tote bag. Um, so the struggle bus story is, um, I suck at math. I do, I suck at math. And I knit a swatch, y'all. I knit a swatch, I measured the swatch, and the color, not the colors, the, the bag came out huge. Like, I'm hopefully, future Kalisha is putting in pictures of like how big this bag was before I sewed up the bottom. But I know last last episode I was talking about maybe putting a leather bottom on it, blah, blah, blah. I didn't do any of that because this tote bag was basically a pencil skirt. I could have put it on and then worn a belt and been like pencil skirt down to my knees. It was ridiculous. So what I ended up doing, instead of adding fabric to the bottom and creating the box bottom, I just made the box bottom out of the bag. So it's knitting all the way around. Um, so the death, the entire Deathly Hollows um, motif is the bottom of the bag. It's fine. <laughs> so I don't have it because I've already given it to my friend and uh, she really liked it. So thumbs up for that. I did line the bag, so it's it's lined on the inside and I made straps. I was so proud of myself because I, I sewed the straps on with the little square and the X in it. Very profesh, very profesh. But um, like I knew that I wanted to do those kind of bag straps. So I had gone to Joann's to just buy, you know, ready-made straps um, for the bag, uh, but they didn't have any colors I liked. So I went to look at their trim section and they had this strap that was perfect. It was navy blue. Matter of fact, do I have any? In yeah. This is the leftover. It's just this navy blue and it's supposed to be white, but because it has the blue woven through it, it, it comes across as a super pale gray, 
which matched my color work perfectly. Like, I couldn't have made this fit better if I tried. So, I have a tiny little bit of strap left, so maybe I need to make myself like a little bag and I can carry it around like that. Um, yeah. And I was even like even more excited because not only did it fit my color scheme perfectly, like perfectly matched the navy blue, perfectly matched the, the light gray, but it was also on clearance and that was like 99 cents a yard. I was just like, oh my gosh, do I need to buy all of this? No, I don't, but I wanted to, but I didn't. I'm very proud of myself. Go Kalisha, pat on the back. Anyway, um, the only thing about the bag that I kicked myself afterwards was I forgot to put a pocket in it. I wanted to put like a big square pocket inside the bag in the, on the lining so that, you know, whenever she put all her stuff in, she'd have a little pocket, you know, cause it's handy. And I totally forgot to do that and then sewed up everything. And then when I remembered, I was just like, she's not gonna get a pocket. Sorry, not happening. But yeah, so that is my Ravenclaw tote all done and yes so was there anything else I wanted to say about that no actually kind of so as I was working on this project I kept thinking things like oh man you know Meg wrote this pattern so that these could be sweaters and here I am just like mushing them together and making a tote bag but like the good thing like the thing about being creative and being an artist or a maker is that you can take an idea as a jumping off point and use it as steps like to get to point B right and I was really enjoying the process of taking these two things and merging them together and making a completely separate thing that they were not intended to be originally. So that was a lot of fun. So um, yeah, that was that was great. So I modded out the wazoo, all the modifications. Um, but yeah, thumbs up, it was good. The next finished object that I have, I do have to show you and it is a quilt. I finished my uh, Ankara African print fabric quilt and let me show you some. So this is it folded in half. <laughs> and then the other side is the same thing. So um, this quilt is just full of scraps of African print fabric scraps from my stash. Um, basically every, I did an African print bag update, I think for, did I do one this past Black History Month? I might have, I don't know, time is gone, what is time? But I definitely did one for Kwanzaa and I have done one for Black History Month in the past. And whenever I make these bags, I always have leftovers. So what I did was I went through all of my leftovers of my African print fabric and I cut, um, I think they were five inch squares, <laughs> roughly five inch squares. And then I sewed them into strips and then I sewed the strips together and, oh, I didn't show you the back. So um, this is the backing. And as you can see, I just did straight line, straight lines for the quilting. Um, I, why, why, why Kalisha? Why are you doing this the hardest way possible? I don't know. Okay, so can you see them? Yeah, so I sewed my lines this way. They're not quilting, there's no quilting going this way because um, I basically stitched in the ditch going across this way and then going this way, the, the patches don't line up or the squares don't line up. And I'm okay with that. It's fine. Um, I did my binding, which this was my, as I was thinking about, I thought this was my first time doing 
a quilt binding, but I did make a teeny tiny quilt when I lived in Alabama, but that was so small that I'm just not going to count it. I'm just going to pretend it didn't exist. So for all intents and purposes, this is my first quilt and this is my binding. It's there's definitely some shenanigans and tomfoolery on the back of this quilt. I'm sure that there's not supposed to be all of these <laughs> stitching lines. I'm pretty sure that's not how it's supposed to look, but it's together and I'm very excited about it. So this backing fabric, um, I got this from a store in Alabama called Unclaimed Baggage, which is basically one of those stores that like, if somebody loses their luggage and they never come to claim it, um, after a certain amount of time, it's basically just given to this store and the store that sells the stuff. <laughs> and uh, whenever Lamar and I go back to Alabama for anything, we always try to go past um, unclaimed baggage because you can really find some awesome stuff in there. Like, I don't know who these people are that just be losing like electronics and being like, well, if it's lost, I'm not going to. Like, I don't know, maybe they have insurance on all of their things and they're like, I can replace it, no problem. But if my luggage ever gets lost and I have something like my camera in that bag or my computer, somebody gonna re return my stuff. Anyway, get back on subject. So um, one of the last times that we were there, I found this fabric and I think another piece of Ankara, An Ankara fabric. And um, I was really excited about that. So I was like, yes. Um, so it, it was pretty cool that I could have one whole piece of African print fabric as the back of my quilt. Um, I think it measures, it measures about, I wanna say just under 45 by 50 ish roundabouts there um yeah and i'm just really proud of it i am so proud of this quilt Ugh. i it it, it has mm, words it has already had a photo shoot um i told my grandma my grandma about it and she was like oh my gosh i'm so proud of you so i told her when i finished it i was gonna send her a picture of the quilt with Tootie because Tootie is her favorite. Poor little Kiva. But Tootie is my grandma's favorite. But yeah, so I think that I zoomed through the end of that quilt um, because my husband and I have been doing a lot of um, like cleaning and getting rid of stuff and like cleaning and purging. And um, I took, I put all of my quilts, all of my quilts. It's only, I think three. Yeah, I think it's three quilts that I have um, that are in various states of completion. But I put them all in a box and I taped the box up and I wrote on it, do not open until you finish the Ankara quilt. And when I wrote that, I thought like, okay, Kalisha, you've kind of lost steam on that. It's gonna take you a while to finish it we're good and then i finished it like two days later and i was like this this wasn't the plan this was not the plan but it's okay because now i have a finished quilt and i can fold this one up maybe put it into storage and take one of the other quilts out and probably if i'm honest stall out on that one for another couple months because i'm Kalisha and that's what i do what else so those are my finished objects i'm looking around trying to see if there's anything else because when you don't podcast for two weeks, you kind of do stuff and then you forget you did stuff and then just stuff is everywhere. But I don't think I have any more finished objects to share with you guys. Um, the next thing we have is works in progress. So we have one and where is two? I promise you guys, I like organized stuff. I did. I had it. Hello? Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, there it is. Found it. Two. I think this is it. 
this is all we're going to talk about. So one, I'm just going to show this one real quick because it looks the same. <laughs> it's the Grinch sweater. No, it's not. That's a total lie. It's a Grinch shawl. And this pattern is the Hope Shawl by Snickerdoodle Knits. And since you last saw it, I have done four repeats. No, two repeats. This is as far as we've gotten. So basically, I was working on this this past Sunday um, in my uh, the Sunday meeting that I have with my um, college poetry club. Um, when the lockdown started, we all uh, we planned a Zoom meeting for Sundays for us to get together and talk, chit chat, share poems, whatever like that. And um, this past Sunday, I thought that, you know, I was listening and just knitting away, knitting away. I knit a whole row, and I'm pretty sure there's more than 100 stitches on here right now. Knit a whole row, got to the end, and I was off by one stitch. And I was just like, oh my gosh. So I unknit the whole row and then started it again and was still off. So I came to the conclusion that I cannot listen to my poetry friends and knit lace. Not a thing. So I need to start another vanilla sock so that I have something to work on when I'm listening to my poetry friends because obviously I can't concentrate when I'm hanging out with them. But I definitely appreciate that group of friends, particularly in this time. Um, like... It was really awesome to be able to hang out with them at the beginning of quarantine because everybody was like, oh my gosh, stuck in the house, can't see anybody. Like everyone was going a little stir crazy. Um, so that was fun. But especially now in this time of it's just stress, I, stress is an understatement, but being able to hang out with um, my, my poet friends who a lot of, like we all went to the same college and the college I went to was Oakwood University. It's, um, an HBCU, an Adventist HBCU, but, um, HBCU is historically, blah, 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 historically black colleges and universities, if you didn't know. So, um, it's, it was really good to be able to get together with a group of black people who can understand where each of us is coming from, can share our stories and feel safe and heard and, and uplifted and supported um, and celebrated all at the same time. Like I really, really value these people and um, within the, within the group, we call each other, we call the group is fam, like we're family. Like there's a certain level of familiarity that is, is developed when you are constantly with a group of people who are all artists and who are all always writing about their life and experiences. We know all of each other's business. <laughs> Or at least in college we did. You know, everybody's business, what everybody is going through, and you're just supporting each other through that. So that closeness carries through. And I, like, I was just sitting on there one night, just happy to tears to be amongst them. But can't knit lace amongst them. Can't do it. <sighs> So speaking of not being able to knit lace, I have a vanilla project. Um, and this is, I don't know where the label is, but this is my, oh, I put the label in the sock because that made sense. Good move, Kalisha. So this yarn is by String Theory Color Works and it is the displacement base, which is 80% superwash BFL and 20% nylon. Um, it's the colorway glucose, 
which means there's seven rows mint, three rows black, seven dark pink orchid, three black, seven electric violet, three black, and seven sapphire, three black. So that's uh, String Theory Colorworks logo. She is a local to me Florida dyer. And this is what I have. Ba bam So I was up to here last time you guys saw the sock. Wow, you can see how my gauge changed right here. I don't know what was going on and then it, you know, tightened back up to normal. Um, but as you can see, I've got two cuffs here. And I think I'm gonna try some toe up socks. This is just a side note. But I think I'm gonna try some toe up socks because I typically do cuff down because I don't really like how bind offs are around my cuff. But for this one, I did, who is it, Jenny or Judy's? Je Jenny's surprisingly stretched. I almost called it surprisingly sketchy bind off again. Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off? Judy's. Yeah, it's Judy's magic cast on and Jenny's bind off. But I did the surprisingly stretchy bind off on a needle size one bigger than what I had knit the cuff on. And this is a German twisted cast on like I normally do. And look okay how can I show this basically the Jenny's stretches farther I'll do it this way so it's in the front no I'll put the farther one in the back so that's that's the difference in the stretch right there which is pretty cool so I think I'm gonna see how I like a bind off like that um, yeah so you might wonder why there's a million uh, needles in here and that's because I have knit two socks at one time this is something that I like to do when I don't have when I know for sure I don't have enough yarn to confidently knit two socks separately I'll just knit a tube and then split it in half so this point right here i'm going to split and then knit the toes and then i'll go back and put an afterthought heel now the only problem is this was i had a total of 35 grams because this was a mini or a leftovers that was given to me by my friend jennifer i had 35 grams i ended up taking off a couple grams because i wanted the the stripe sequence to be um uninterrupted and um, when I, I did that, this is gonna be really, really short. I have a size 10, a US size 10 foot, which is big. <laughs> and if I were to put the toe in, and the toe is like roughly like two inches worth of knitting or so, yeah, about two inches of knitting, um, I would essentially have a cuff and then almost immediately the heel and then you know the rest of the the foot and I'm not really a fan of shorty socks so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put the toe in these and then um, I have a friend who I was knitting on this um, at her house recently and she liked the colorway so I'm going to put the heel in wherever it measures to her foot and then she can have these socks I already tried it on my leg to see if it was itchy because you know not everybody can get down with wool socks um, and it's not really that itchy now one thing I will say the BFL um, when I was working with it like this is a I I think that this is a high twist yarn I could be wrong I don't know um, but it's it is a very It was very ropey, I think. I want to. I think that's the word I want to use. But um, it did make my my finger hurt a while after like knitting on it for a while, because um, it would just be dragging across my uh, my finger. 
but I definitely don't think that they're gonna wear out anytime soon, especially since it's Florida and she's probably not gonna be wearing them a lot anyway. Um, but yeah, I really like this colorway. Good job, string, I almost said string thing. It's string theory, color works. Um, this yarn here is Lion Brand Sockies in whatever the purple colorway is. And then I'm gonna do purple toes and I think a black heel. Um, yeah. And I thought it was gonna, it's gonna be kind of cool that they're going to match up on the blue and pink stripes. So that's kind of cool. And then the toes, I split the, the pink stripe there for the toes. So yeah, that's it. Oh! I got stash positions in there. Let me put them here because I didn't put them on my show notes because I forgot about them. I knew I got something else in the mail. Okay, that is everything for my works in progress. Um, for maker plans, I just made this maker plan today. And I was scrolling on Instagram, as you do, and my, like, what am I going to call you? my my yarny best friend <laughs> so if you guys remember i have a collection of little brown girl um clay progress keepers that i got from whitney marie anderson and so we follow each other on instagram and i feel like we are the same person <laughs> but she's in California, I'm in Florida, and like the similarities are mind boggling between the two of us. Um, like to the point where she posted a color combination today and she was like, I love this color combination. It was yellow, orange, and green. And I was like, those are legitimately my favorite colors and my favorite color combination. So at this point, any other similarity that comes up between us, I'm just gonna be like, I mean, we're basically twins, basically. So I say all that to say that she has decided um, that she's going to start knitting the framework bralette, I think, by Jessie Mae Martinson. And I asked her, I was like, ooh, when did you start? I have a Jessie Mae pattern that I want to do. Maybe we can knit together. So she's going to be starting her framework tonight. And I'm going to start the um, my little secret crop top. And the plan. Now, I have not swatched or anything. Because I, like I told you, I made this plan up today. So this could all go awry. Just like my uh, ripple camisole went sideways. But hopefully it will not. I'm gonna be using this yarn. This is Adrian Vitadini Maria. It's a navy blue. Oh wow, that's real fuzzy. What is that? Oh, it's just fuzz. We're good. Never mind. It's a navy blue and it's like super stretchy. I don't know how this is gonna to be to knit. I don't know how it's gonna go, but I really like it. I got this at some thrift store. I don't remember where, but I have like six balls of it, I think. So it is 48% uh, Merino, 48% acrylic, and 4% Lycra. They're 50 grams to 220 yards. So that makes it about a worsted weight, but that's probably unstretched yards is a worsted weight, but when you stretch it, it's definitely like, mm, it's getting close to fingering. Whatever is smaller, sport or DK, it's like that. Um, so yeah, I might hold two strands of this together. I don't know, but I think that this, as a tank top is going to be really cool um especially since it'll be like stretchy i don't know how that's going to work i don't uh, uh, I'm just going to jump in because i'm Kalisha and i do that uh -huh. 
So this is going to be the My Little My Little Secret crop top by Jessie Mae Martinson. It will not be a crop top because I don't like crop tops. It's going to be a long long enough to cover my back top. <laughs> and um yeah, hopefully I have enough yarn. Hopefully I don't run out because, you know, thrifted yarn and whatnot. But that's the only thing that I have for stash acquisitions. Or no, that's the only thing I have for maker plans, I think. Yeah, that's the only thing I have for maker plans. Oh, I just thought of another work in progress that I could show you guys. One moment. Okay, so I have been working on my granny, my crochet crochet granny square of course they are crocheted I've been working on my granny square stack and this is what I have so I've decided that I can only show these to you all stacked up because that's the only way that you'll really be able to see the difference in anything so they start out I'm striping them so I do a row or a round of this green this is Kelly green Patty Green. This is Patty Green um, Red Heart Super Saver. And then this one is Woolies. Just bending down all over the place. It's Woolies in Poseidon. And that's the color progression of the Poseidon. So, oh, and this is going exactly in that order. It started here. That doesn't always happen. So we have worked all the way up to this third color. And we're transitioning into the fourth color right now. So all the way up to there. And then you can see this one's a little bit darker than that. Um, fun fact about this, this was supposed to be a stash busting project. And I, you know, grab the green, the ball of green yarn from my stash. I grabbed the woolies from my stash. I started crocheting up. And then I realized that I did not have enough green to get me very far at all. So I was like, all right, go out to the store. I bought another ball of uh, patty green. And I put it here under my table. I for sure know I put it here under my table because I would look at it a lot during work. Like I'm working and I'm just like, oh, I just rather be crocheting. It was under the table. That thing grew legs and walked smooth off because I could not find it. I got to the end of my green, my green yarn and I look and the, the, the replacement or the next yarn is nowhere to be found. So I looked for it for days, could not find it. So I had to go out and buy another one. So I know that when I finish this project, I'm still gonna have this yarn I'm pretty sure I'm going to have a good chunk of this left. And as soon as I finish it, I know that other yarn is going to like pop up out of nowhere. Like, hey, did you miss me? And I'm going to be like, you know what? I'm going to give you away. You're going to the Goodwill right now. Because um, this always happens whenever I want to do a like a stash busting project. I always pick the yarn in my stash that is going to run out in the middle of the project. Why am I this person? Poor planning, poor planning. But anyway, Granny Square Stack, still working. All right, now, works in progress are done done. Maker plans are done done. And we are on to stash acquisitions, which there are a few. So I'll first I'll start off with the ones that I discovered in that bag. So I placed an order with Black Pearl Magic and she showed these uh, stitch markers on her. I think I saw them on Instagram. Instagram be getting me, but I think I saw them on Instagram or I saw one of them on Instagram and then I went to her Etsy and I saw the other one and I was like, oh, I could just get one of each. So I did. So there's these gold ones and this is a set of five. That one's a set of five. And then these are like brown, like brownie bronze. And this is a set of two, four, six, eight, ten. This is a set of ten. And these are a little textured 
as you can see. So I even kept them on the little cards for you guys. And that's backwards. Kept them on the little cards because like I have to show these on the podcast and then almost forgot about them because they were in the bottom of that bag. I also have this little dangly progress keeper um, that I got from her as well. I don't know if she has any of these left in her shop, but um, definitely check her out. Black Pearl Magic. Um, all right, so we'll go on with stash positions of things that I bought, um, and then we'll get into some gifts. So the next stash position that I have is a skein of yarn from Neighborhood Fiber Co. This is my first purchased um, yarn from Neighborhood Fiber Co. Um, I have another skein of their yarn in my collection that I won in a giveaway or a, a yeah, or some sort of contest. And it's a beautiful gold color. This one is like a, like peach the fruit. Okay, because you know how like peaches, they're like, they have that peach color, but then they also have a little bit red. Yeah, this is like that. So this is the Rustic Fingering Base. It's 100% super washed merino and it's a single. Um, I was not expecting a single and that's only because I did not read. It's fine. Um, and also in the picture, now this is a testament to colors looking different depending on your monitor. The picture that I looked at, this was more orange and less peach. So when it came, I was like, oh, that's not what I was expecting. But luckily for me, I have essentially a craft store in my closet. So I think what I'm gonna do with this, because I really wanted like an orange, I think I'm going to add a little orange to it um, just to make it a little bit more vibrant. And I plan to hold this double and um, basically create a, um, a two-ply DK using this. And I, I have an idea already for what project I'm going to make or what pattern I'm going to make. So be on the lookout for that. So I'm just going to ever so slightly adjust this color. And this is the color Lake, is it Eve Sham or Eva Sham? One of those, but um, yeah. So yeah, that is actually coming up really right on the color. Hopefully, depending on your monitor, this might be the correct color, or you might see the orange that I thought I was ordering. <laughs> it's fine. Um, so yeah, I definitely want to brighten it up because it is very, it is very pastel right now. So I want to like make it a bit more vibrant of an orange and um, a little bit deeper of an orange, more of a rich orange color. Um, and then I'll just show you these two. These I got from Joann's. I went there to get binding for my quilt. And while I was there, I was like, oh, let me just look at the yarn section and see what the deal is. And this is on was on clearance. This is the Hook Nook Small Stuff. This is a DK weight and it's 100% um, acrylic. And this colorway is Gemstone and Green Thumb. I also have a plan for these. Basically, these are all the same plan. They're not going to be in the same project at the same time. But my um, plan for these is basically to, well, I don't know what I'm going to do with all of these. I'm going to pick one of them and I'll make a sample of one of my uh, new patterns that I'm writing. Um, yeah, so that's going to be a hat pattern in the wings coming at you at some point in the future. Um, yeah, so I think those are the only yarny stash positions that I have that I bought, but let me show you, <laughs> let 
my next uh, stash position. It's actually some fabric that I got from Shelly Can. And if you are familiar with she Shelly Can, uh, one, she's hilarious and you know that. But two, she is basically like a, an amazing creator of yarn, like y yarn adjacent yarny things. So that means like if you are a fan, like, okay, I'm a fan of space. So she will take things in that genre or that theme and make them yarny. So um, like she had a an enamel pin that was a planet, but the planet, the ball of the planet was a yarn ball and then it had like rings around it. Um, I thought I had one of her stickers up there, but I don't. But anyway, at the beginning of quarantine, she showed this pattern that she was coming up with, which was toilet paper. And I looked at it and I was like, oh my gosh, that's hilarious. And she mentioned that she was gonna have it made into fabric. So I bought myself a yard of toilet paper fabric. And I'm very excited about this toilet paper fabric because it is just so random. And it's perfect for this year that is definitely a WTF year. Like, for real? For real. <laughs> so, yeah, I bought a yard of her toilet paper fabric. She did just come out with um, enamel pens. Like, one of them is a toilet paper enamel pen, and the other one is, I want to say it's like a bottle of hand sanitizer, and it says, like, Corona time or something like that. Um, but yeah, I am thinking about making another face mask because I have one, one face mask that I like wearing. Um, and I would like to have another one. This might end up being a face mask. <laughs> it's too good. It's too good. Um, yeah. So I bought that. So now I received two gifts um, recently in the mail. And everything is not right next to me. I'm the worst. Actually, no, I received three gifts. So the first one is, I'm just gonna. Okay. So that's all of the yarny and yarn adjacent things that I have purchased um, recently. And I do have a couple other stash acquisitions. I received some gifts in the mail. So thank you. If you were one of the people who sent me something, I really appreciate it. But let me show you what I have recently received. So I got this skein of yarn from Hannah, Hannah of the Cozy Cottage Crochet. And it is so colorful, so rainbow. This is by Lila Lovely, Project Bags, Hair Bows, and Fun Things. And this colorway is Snarwall. Uh, this is the favorite sock base, which is 80% superwash merino wool and 20% nylon, 40 gram, 40 grams, 100 grams to 400 yards. And there that speckly goodness is. I think, is there orange in here? It's kind of like a speckled rainbow on a background of light blue. And I really like how soft it is. So I got that from Hannah. It's just a little thinking of you gift, which I really appreciated. And then I received um, a package from Adrian of the Freakish Lemon. And he sent me some black, black bean, black bean seeds and marigold seeds. And um, I gave the black beans to my friend Cherie 
um, who is also the one who I gave the uh, Ravenclaw tote to. But she's got like, she has the food garden. <laughs> so um, I was like, if anybody is going to want to grow and harvest these black beans, she's the one. Uh, when I went to give her the black beans, she was like, oh, thank you so much. You can see over here, I have my okra growing. We've got some black eyed peas back here. Do you need black eyed pea plants? I was like, no, we don't. But um, yeah, she's she is the food gardener. When we lived together in Alabama, she had um, a container garden on our balcony. So she is definitely an earth girl. So I gave her the uh, black beans and I kept the marigolds. So I think I'm going to plant the marigolds. I'm not sure where. Um, I have like a little, like a flower box. So I might just plant all the marigolds in there. There's something nostalgic about the way that marigolds smell. He also gave me these two minis, which this one is Once Upon a Corgi, Briny Beach which is a colorway from her um, A Series of Unfortunate Events Club. And this is nine grams. So I think what I'm gonna do with this, with both of these, I'm gonna put them away for Christmas. Put them in my uh, advent calendar. <laughs> I mean, if you put it away early enough, you forget that you have it and it's like a surprise all over again. Smarts. And then this one is once Upon a Corgi, The Teeth, which is a custom colorway from the movie Attack the Block. And this is 10 grams. This one is sparkly as well. I'm definitely gonna have to put this one away because this is really pretty. This is like a color that I would definitely want to use right now. So I'm gonna squirrel those away for Christmas. So thank you, Adrian, for that. Um, I was trying to remember what he put on the card. It was like to Kalisha, the plant mama from Adrian, the dirt gremlin or something like that, <laughs> which made me laugh because I always call to a dirt fairy. Um, so dirt gremlin made me laugh. So anyway, um, the last gift that I received um, I actually got this one to my P.O. box, and this one is from Carla. And look at that pretty note. Like, fancy. But she sent me um, a bunch of fingering weight yarn um, that she doesn't really use anymore. So I'll show you a couple of them. Um, just in a box. So I think what I'm going to do with these... I'm going to put some aside for, I almost said surprises, no, for prizes and um, keep some in my own stash. So I wanted to show you this one because it made me laugh when I pulled it out the box. So she gave me one of these. This is Lime Brand Sock Ease in the, is it Lemonade? Lemon Drop Colorway. This one made me chuckle because I have a skein of this that I got from one of my local yarn stores when it was closing. And before I bought that one, I was searching for this particular colorway all over the place. Couldn't find it anywhere um, in any stores that carried sock ease. They never had this colorway. It was never available on anybody's website. So I was just like, oh man, it's so pretty. I'm never gonna get it. And so I finally got a ball of it from my yarn shop and I started knitting with it a couple episodes back. Um, ripped out the needles because I wanted to do something else. But now I have two skeins of it. So now I'm like, okay, I have 200 grams of this. I could do something bigger instead of just socks. So who knows? So I got that from her. And then she also sent me a skein of Regia. And I've never, have I ever used Regia? No, I do have, was it Regia that did the, I had like a watermelon, some watermelon socks, but that's cotton, like a cotton blend, I think. So this is 75% superwash, nope, 75% new wool, 
25% polyamid. Um, and there's no colorway, just a number. It's <laughs> colorway number 5739. Woo! So that is the color. Very grapey. And then she sent me a couple skeins of this yarn. This is Patagonia, 75% wool, 25% polyamide. And this is a single. Um, yeah, these don't have colorways either. So she sent, uh-oh, yarn down. These. <clears throat> that one. So those are the colorways of these. And then the last things that were in the box were these two that were already caked up. This one is, it looks like it's all primary colors. So red, blue, yellow, red, blue, yellow, and then green. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if this will stripe. I think it might, like looking at how it, like how the colors land when it's being um, balled up. I think it might stripe. And then this one is I don't know, is this a full rainbow? There's red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purplish red. Kind of a full rainbow. And there's that one. So, lots of little things to keep my fingers busy. Um, that is everything for sash positions. But I have one other sash position that I wanna share with you guys. Um, and this can kind of go over into life and whatnot. Um, so a couple weeks ago, um, one of my podcast viewers sent me a message on Ravelry, I think it was on Ravelry, and said like, hey, did you know that you're in a magazine? And I was like, what? <laughs> so I sent them back in a, a message and I was like, no, you know, what magazine? Where can I get it? Blah, blah blah and so she sent me a picture of um the little blurb about me in this magazine and of course i went like to find where i could buy this magazine and i bought myself a copy i'm so excited it is the knit now magazine and this is my first time being in a publication and i'm like so excited what so they did a um a roundup of podcasts um and they included me look that's me <laughs> and like it's so cool to be able to open this magazine and be like oh man i watched so many of these podcasts there's heidi from books and cables and anushka from the crimson stitchery and Fruity Knitting, The Grocery Girls, and then a couple other um, podcasts in here that I that I don't watch, but I have heard of. Um, that was just really, really cool. And of course, the first thing that I did was when I when it came in, I didn't tell my parents about it when like I first found out about it. But when the magazine came in, first thing I did was call my mom. I was like, Mom, what are you doing? And she's like, oh, nothing. I'm just sitting in the den watching TV. I was like, all right, I'm going to FaceTime you because I have something I want to show you. And I showed it to her. And she was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so happy and proud of you. <laughs> so, like, that's so, that's so cool. Like, that somebody likes my podcast enough to share it in this way. So... Of course, then I had to go buy two more um, editions, like two more copies of this magazine so that I can send it to my parents, like the good daughter that I am. <laughs> and um, yeah, like I called my dad and he was super excited. I called my best friend and I was just like, oh my gosh, I cannot believe that this, this happened. Like this is a real thing. Your girl is in a magazine. Also, 
I don't think anybody around here sells this magazine because I couldn't find it in any store here. So I had to buy it from the UK. So this came all the way across the pond to get to me. But I'm so happy that I have it. And thank you guys for watching this because if it weren't for you guys, I would still be recording videos and shouting out into the ether of the internet. But instead of shouting out into the ether, I'm shouting out at people, <laughs> which is, it's so cool. It's so cool. Um, yeah, so that's, that is a, a bright spot in an otherwise questionable month. <laughs> um, but yeah, other bright spots that happened this month, this past Monday, um, the 15th, was uh, Lamar and my, Lamar and my, me and Lamar, it was our sixth wedding anniversary. So if you follow me on Instagram, you probably saw um, pictures that I was posting. I posted some pictures from our wedding um, and I posted like some pictures of our like anniversary getaway. We went to the beach um, and actually spent more time in the car than out on the beach, <laughs> which I'm not even mad at. Because to be honest, we pulled up to the beach and I looked out, I was like, hmm, that's a lot of people. I mean, it wasn't like a crowd, but still like people that I don't know on a regular non-pandemic level, people I don't know make me nervous and I don't like being around other people, but put a pandemic on top of that and I'm really like, I'll just stay in the car. It's fine. It's fine. So we stayed in the car for more than half of the time we were there. And then the time that we did get out of the, um, out of the car, we went down, we went down to the water. We got wet up until our knees. Well, Lamar, he got wet up to his chest because he was, he had waded out in the water and had turned around to come back. And a wave was like, oh son, you shouldn't have turned your back on me. And was like, wha bam <laughs> He almost fell. I'm a little salty that I did not, I did not have my camera ready to record that whole thing or to take pictures or anything. So hopefully my brain decides to keep that memory because it's a good one. Um, he also almost lost his shoe in the ocean and had to go chase it down, which again was delightful for me to witness. And um, we took a couple pictures out there. We accidentally uh, recreated a picture that we took like eight years ago, I think. So I'll put a picture of that up here. Um, so that happened. And then after we left the beach, like um, we went to go like wash the sand off of our legs and stuff. And there was like a historic marker with like a story of the area. And if there is a historical, a historic marker somewhere, Lamar is going to stop and read it. And he was like, oh wow, Kalisha, this is really cool. Okay. We went to New Smyrna Beach and the section of the beach that we ended up going to um, was called Bethune Volusia Beach, which historically, back in the time when um, beaches were segregated and black people could only go to the beach on like certain times of the year. Um, Mary McLeod Bethune got a bunch of people together and purchased this strip of land, like this strip of beach, in order to make a place for black people to be able to like go to the beach freely. And it was an area where there were a lot of black owned businesses and like that black people could just come and relax on the beach like everybody else and I didn't know like I have been to that part of the beach before but I never noticed like the historical signs so it was really cool for me to be able to kind of identify with that um, piece of history like to be able to experience that piece of history on our anniversary and one of the things that it was saying was um, it was a really booming area but then when integration happened and people had options of going to other beaches, 
um, that that area started, you know, losing um, its popularity because to be honest, it's not the best beach. Um, so of course, when the like better beaches opened up and were allowing black people to come to them, you will go to the better beach. But the the idea that this particular part of the beach was set aside, was purchased specifically to allow black people to be able to come and swim freely. Like who segregates the ocean? For real? All right. Um, but yeah, and then I thought, I thought another nice thing or another interesting thing was it was not a blacks only beach. It was a beach that was made with black people in mind, but was also open for other people. Like if anyone else wanted to come to this beach, you're welcome to come, you know? So I feel like that really said something about the mindset of Mary, Mary McClaw Bethune and the people, the other people who um, helped her bring this, this uh, beach to life said something about their mindset. Um, and it was just that, like, that was a really awesome thing to discover. And I think I will frequent that beach. <laughs> Primarily because I'm not really a beach goer, to be honest. I'm not going to go swimming in the ocean just because, you know, if I can't see the bottom, I'm not really down for it. Um, and I don't, I don't like sand. <laughs> This makes me sound like such like a not outdoorsy person. I'm like, I don't really like sand. And I don't really like when you can't see in the water and something brushes up against your leg. That is the worst. The worst. But um, yeah. And I, I'll put a picture because I took a picture of the like historical blurb. I'll put a picture of that at the end so you can like read a bit, read about it as well. Um, but yeah, man, that's basically everything in life and whatnot. Um, I do have some plant mama life stuff. I bought myself a new plant, as you can see right here. Um, this is my first Monstera and I'm super excited about it. So this little baby right here is actually a third of the Monstera that I got. So I bought a Monstera from Walmart and in the, the pot there were three stems. So I went ahead and separated them. Um, I repotted the big one that like it has, its leaves are, are pretty big. You can see like the, what are they called? Fenestrations, the little slits in the leaves. Um, and yeah, so that one is in a pot outside and it sits with my dasheen. Um, and then I have this one, which I just put in a little glass jar. I think I'm gonna keep this one in water just because I really like how it looks. And then the third stem is just hanging out in here with one of my, um, what was this? This is the pothos. It's hanging out in here with one of my pothos. Um, Oh, and is this a philodendron? I just stuck everybody in this pot. This is a mixed bag of plants um, or this container. Um, I'm going to put this one in some in soil soon. But you can see it's got a little little something, something going on. Little teeny tiny hole here. But I... I want, I wanted a Monstera, like, since the first time I ever saw them. I was like, they're such an impressive plant, but they're also huge. So when I saw these at Walmart, they were, like, mini Monsteras. So um, I liked that they were smaller. Like, you could keep one of these on a desk. Um, but I just love how big and expressive the leaves are and the funny thing about when I bought this one there was actually another one that I was looking at that seemed to be like in better condition 
but something about this particular plant was just like no i'm gonna take that one like i'm, I'm gonna take that one home with me so yeah those are my new monstera babies and then right here you can see my avocado let me show you this one this one is just having it's a good old time look at it he's so tall now um yeah she's doing really well they i don't know um i got these little sticky yellow pads to catch um the like gnats and they're doing an awesome job so yeah man oh we got new leaves coming in on this one you're doing so good i wonder if you need a bigger pot i don't know probably not we're just gonna leave you in this let you feel good in there so yeah um that's everything I think that's everything that I have to show or share or talk about or laugh about. I hope that you are having a good week. Um, if your state has opened back up, I hope that it's safe. <laughs> um, Y'all send up prayers for us here in Florida because folks be walking around outside like Corona never happened. Yep, that's happening. So yeah, um, thank you so much for being a part of my universe. Thank you for being here. Leave a comment down below of something good that's happened to you, a positive note um, or a bright spot, and we shall hang out again. I know that I have been podcasting like every two weeks recently, but you know, it bees like that sometimes. So I might see you next week. I might see you the week after that. But God willing and the creek don't rise, I will see you. <laughs> Bye, friends. Hi, friends. So this is edited in Kalisha, and um, I put the picture in of the Bethune Volusia Beach blurb, like the sign and the information. But I feel like it may not be, like when I imported it into the, editing software it wasn't clear so I'm gonna read it to you also this is the shirt that I decided to wear on Juneteenth yes 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 all the yes so it says Bethune Beach swimming freely okay it says, welcome to Volusia County's Mary McClaw Bethune Beach Park, once part of a nationally known African-American resort. Named for a noted educator and presidential advisor, this spot gave black people a place of their own when most Florida beaches were closed to them by segregation. Bethune had seen her own students turned away from local beaches. And in the 1940s, she and other investors bought a 2.5 or bought 2.5 miles of ocean front plus lands along the Indian River. After all, she reported, she reportedly said, this was God's water for everyone to enjoy. People did enjoy themselves here. By the 1950s, Bethune Volusia Beach, its corporate name, was a popular a popular destination for swimming, fishing, picnicking, and car racing. Crowds also came for live music, dancing, and as more than one informant recalled, dressing to be seen. Central Floridians made up most of the day users, but others journeyed great distances to stay in a motel and to stay in a motel and private houses. From New Smyrna to Atlanta and Pittsburgh, black black Americans knew about Bethune Beach. Bethune herself envisioned a big year-round resort controlled by African Americans, but open to all people. Yet the larger development never really took off, and by the 1970s, the dream had faded. 
Most black landowners by choice or economic necessity gave up their property over time and the coming of integration meant that beachgoers had other places to go. Even so, during its heyday, Bethune Beach became a beloved, a beloved site for people of color. It was, it was that rare place on Florida's Atlantic coast where they could gather, relax, and swim freely. So yeah, that was an awesome discovery. So I hope that this Juneteenth you have either been able to learn something new, um, period, like learn something new about Juneteenth, learn something new about um, Black culture, or um, find a way to continue educating yourselves. Um, one thing that I didn't really get to do anything today because I had to go to work. Um, but one thing that I will be doing um, after I finish editing this is I'm going to finish, um, I don't know if I'm going to finish it. I think I'm kind of in the middle of this book, but I am reading How Long Till, what's it called? How Long Till Black Future Month by N.K. Jemisin. And it's a collection of her short stories and I am really loving it. I just finished one of her short stories and wrote down a quote from it on a sticky note and it says it's so easy to have principles far far harder to live by them and when the character in um in the story said that it really hit me because yeah it's so easy to have principles it's so easy to say this is something that you believe in or this is something that matters to you but a lot a lot of other a lot Mm, what I want to say, but it's, it's harder to live by them and to stick by them and to, um, to stand in them. So I hope that with all of the changes that people are calling for, and I hope that with all of the education and all of the listening and learning that's going on, I hope that this is these moments of growth are something that really stick with all of us and um yeah i just wanted to share that so i'm gonna finish editing this set it to upload and go enjoy the rest of my juneteenth evening bye friends